Welcome back for another video. My name's Adam from WPCrafter.com where I make videos for non-techies like me and maybe like you. Now, this is a video that goes in a series that is going to teach people how to use this done for you template that I created. You can see the homepage here. If you don't have it, you could go to my website, click on done for you templates, click right here and then download the resource file, follow the setup instructions. Now in this specific video, I'm gonna go over what's called the WordPress customizer and show you how you can change everything having to do with the theme for this site. And that is gonna be your header styles, your colors, your fonts, your footer, things like that. Those are all controlled by your WordPress theme. And in this case, the WordPress theme is called Generate Press. So I'm gonna go here to the back end of the website and right here, go to Appearance and then Themes. And you can see it's just the Generate Press theme. Now to go into the customizer, you would just click right here and click on Customize. And it's gonna pull up this panel where we have options on the left but then we have the website on the right and we can see these changes in real time. Now, I have noticed, depending on your web hosting, sometimes you might make a change and not see it right away and you'll just have to click on save. Now, if you're using the default homepage, as you can see, I disabled the, the header area of it and so that's why you don't see a logo and you don't see a menu navigation and stuff like that. So before I jump in, I'm gonna go and add it back to this home page. So I'm gonna get out of the customizer by clicking on the X. I'm gonna go to pages. I'm gonna click on home. And then there's options right here when I scroll down a little bit where it says disable elements. And you can see I have the header disabled, but when I uncheck that, it's gonna re-enable it. And then I'm gonna click on update. And then if I go to the front end of the site and click on refresh, you can see it just added that header back. So I've got my logo area and my navigation area. So this is a better time to jump into the customizer. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go to appearance and then I'm gonna click on customize again. Now, just so you know, there's also an option right here if you're logged into the site to jump into the customizer. So here I am. Now, I'm not gonna go through every little setting like actually changing it to show you alternatives, but I wanna show you where certain things are that you're gonna wanna know. So the first thing right here would be your site identity. Now, as you can see, I don't have a logo on this site, I just have text, and this is where it's getting that text, and this is where you can change that text. Now, if you uh, say didn't wanna show the tagline, you can just click on this checkbox, and it should remove that tagline like that. However, if you wanted to add a logo, this is where you would add your logo. And if you also wanted to add a site icon, that would be if someone saves your website on a mobile device and it adds a icon and it looks kind of like an app on the home screen for like an Apple device, an iPhone. That's what that's gonna be for. So you just click on select logo, drag and drop your logo and it's gonna appear there. So that's how you're gonna get your logo in this website. Okay, so let's look at the layout. Now, you can play around with some of these settings. Nothing gets saved until you click on save and publish. So I'd probably recommend if you put the logo in and you like it, do a save and publish and then start playing around with the other settings. That way, if you change something and then you change your mind and forget how to change it back, you could just refresh this page and those changes you made get wiped out. Anything since the last time you clicked on save and publish. So, container width, that's actually the width of the page. And uh, so if I was to make my browser so wide, that, that's going to dictate how wide the content area goes. I'd recommend keeping it the same. And the header, here's some different options with that. So for this header alignment, let's uh, play around with this for a second. So if I change it to center, I wonder if it moves. Okay, so it just moved the logo over a little bit more. And if I have it right, I think the Okay, that's, that's how the logo gets aligned in this area right here. 
So let me go back to left because that just looks better. And here's how you can manipulate some of the spacing above and below. So if you have a logo and it doesn't look spaced right, you can play around with these top and bottom numbers and the left and right numbers to get it perfect for you. Primary navigation, um, so this is where this primary navigation here, you can change some of the settings with it. So if you don't like this navigation on the right, we could probably change the position right here by choosing different areas. So here's a common uh, way of having your navigation below the header. So when I change it, it should move it down below here. Now obviously if you did that, you might want to make this area a different color and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, but that's how you would do that. And then this uh, positioning here could actually be in the real center if you wanted to do it like that. So you see how I have it below the header, then I can center it. So now the navigation is going to be centered. Let me just go back one. And then on that header alignment, if I go center, you can see how easy it was to just totally change the look of this. Now I've got my logo in the center and now I've got my navigation in the center below. So this is actually a very nice layout uh, that you can use as well. So let me actually put that back. Okay, I'm going to go here, and this was going to be float right, and it's going to be uh, left. No, actually, I think that's right. Okay, that's fine. So anyways, you can see how I'm just playing around with these different settings. And here's also, it's pretty cool, I, maybe I should have uh, enabled this by default. That's the sticky navigation. That's when you scroll, it would stick to the top. You can enable that right there. And here's some different spacing options for the primary navigation. Now you can also have a secondary navigation. I don't actually have it enabled. That's where you can have it uh, a bar up here that might have like a login link or a phone number or a contact us or something like that. You can enable that right here and start playing around with it there as well. Now let's look at the page header. Okay, nothing really exciting there. Sidebar, this is your default layout. I have the default layout is your main like lesson content is going to be on the left and then your sidebar area is going to be on the right and you can play around with these settings if you want as well. You can even make the, the sidebar larger or smaller, etc, etc. And then here's the different options for your footer. That's going to be the area at the very bottom down here and I don't have anything in the footer, just these uh, credits right here. So you can play around with that as well. See, I, I have it say footer widgets zero. So you can add maybe three or four widgets and maybe put some links, a contact form, an address or something along those lines. I hope you're starting to see the power of this solution. You, you ha no feature has been spared from you. Okay, so let's look at the colors and you can manipulate any single color that you want. So right here is our navigation, our primary navigation. I can click right there and I can change the background color. I can change the text color, but there's also what's called a hover text color. So that's when you move your mouse over to hover it and it would change there as well. So if I wanted to make the uh, hover color, this obnoxious color right there, now when I hover over, you see how it changes. So I actually don't want that. <laughs> actually here, let me make it the same color that I have right here. I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste that right in there. Okay, so that is how you can start manipulating some of these colors. So typically you wanna develop what's called a color palette and I should actually make a video on kind of coming up with a color palette. There's actually websites that will generate a color palette and it gives you these things called color codes and it's usually a pound sign with six characters and you can use these color codes for various elements uh, across your website. So here's for your content color so you can manipulate the color of the actual text and as you can see, you have full control over every single color on this website. It's extremely, extremely powerful. Um, so, uh, all right, so let me go back. That's your colors. Topography, this is your fonts, and you can change the fonts in any of these primary font areas. So if I wanted to change the header font, that's gonna be this right here. 
you can just choose any font that you want right here. So I can just choose that and see how it immediately changed. And you can actually do a Google search for Google fonts and you can actually see all the different fonts and then choose it versus going one by one through here. So I'm gonna go back to inherit. And you can also change your, your font sizes here as well and the weight of the font just like that. And then here's for the tagline. So the same thing goes for the primary navigation, the content, everything. You have full control over the size of everything in this solution. So anyways, here's your topography right there. Typically, I like to have my headlines and my menu to be one font. And then I like the body content to be a different font. So you have that um, variation going on and it's not overkill, right? It's not like 20 different fonts on your website. You really don't actually want that at all. So that's how I like to create my sites. Okay, so that's your topography. Background images, this is if you want to say put a background image in the header area or the body and stuff like that. You can play around with that. I've never used a background image like that. Uh, but it's up to you. You can do what you want. Copyright. Uh, if you scroll all the way down, there's this uh, copyright area right here. And it just has some credits uh, for me. However, if you want to put whatever you want, I don't care. I'm not doing this to get some backlink to my site or something like that. I'd much rather you take this video and share it on Facebook and Twitter than to um, have a silly little credit in your footer. So you can go right here and you can change it to whatever you want. My feelings will not be hurt. Um, let me scroll back up. And then menus, this is actually really cool. You go to menus, and this right here is the primary menu. So I'm gonna click on that. You can add menu items right here, and you can rearrange it. So if you wanted memberships to come before courses, you can do that, and you see how it flips in real time, just like that. All right, so that's your menus. And there's uh, the way WordPress works is you create a menu and you assign it someplace. So I created this menu called menu one and I assigned it to the primary menu. So you can create another menu and call it secondary menu and that's the one that's gonna be at the very top and then you can assign it there as well. So it's uh, completely up to you uh, how many menus you want and it's super easy you want to add an item just click add item choose your page or whatever it couldn't be any easier and you can even change what I called this menu right there uh, here's the top menu I um, I put that in but I'm not using it so if the top menu I meant to be over the uh, the header area here so I think if I assigned it to secondary menu it might just appear up there yeah there it is see how it appeared and you can put different links there and you can change the colors so it doesn't kind of look blended in. Uh, so I'm gonna disable that because that's not really what I want. I just wanted to show you. And so there's our menu system. And then the widgets are areas on your website where you can add these little things called widgets. Um, I wouldn't recommend using the customizer for that. You'll probably want to use the back end of WordPress. It's a standard WordPress thing, but I'll also be showing you in this video series. So. That is pretty much how you can totally have control over all the styles of your website, all the colors of your website, all the fonts of your website, all of that. And uh, you can see how easy this is to use and how it can grow with you. I can't think of one thing that you would want that there's not an option for that you can just click with your mouse and get. And that's why I packaged things up this way. Now let me show you one more thing. Okay, I'm gonna click on leave page. You get this if you didn't save your change. So I'm gonna click on leave page because I didn't save my change. Uh, so I'm gonna go to appearance and then I'm gonna go down here to where it says generate press. Now a lot of the power that you're getting that you saw is because of this add-on pack that I included in the template. However, you're not gonna get support for it and you're not gonna get automatic updates through WordPress because you actually need to properly license it, purchase a license. Now you can purchase a license right here. It's only uh, $40, it's a one-time fee, lifetime license, use it on as many sites as you want and it includes support for these add-ons. If you did purchase it, 
uh, you're gonna get issued a license code and you just put that license key here, click on update, and now whenever the developer adds features or adds new add-ons, they're gonna automatically get pushed right into your WordPress website. 40 bucks is dirt cheap for something this powerful, but to start, you don't have to do that, but when it comes time to wanting support, when it comes time to uh, wanting the updated versions of these things, it's definitely worth paying the $40 to support a developer who has built all this awesomeness for you and for people for free, essentially. So uh, anyways, this video was just covering how to control everything in the theme. The next video is gonna be about this awesome page builder called Beaver Builder and how to work with the home page of this site and the other content pages of the site. Hey, really quick, can you do something for me? If you're watching this on YouTube, can you give me a thumbs up? And I wanna invite you to subscribe to this YouTube channel. There's a button right beneath me, and I'd really appreciate it if you did that. And I've got something for you. I don't want you to leave empty-handed. If you just click off here to the side, it's a free video course that I put together just for you called the Three Steps to WordPress Success. You will love this course. Registration is free right now. All you have to do is click on the link right next to me. Hey, thanks for spending this time with me, and I can't wait to make another video for you.